Biological activity requires energy. Metabolism are the reactions that use that energy. Central to this concept is heat, which is the rate of random molecular motion. In the cold, molecules are barely moving. At absolute zero, they're not moving. When heat is high, they're moving very fast. So with increasing heat, molecules encounter each other more often, and when they do, they hit with more energy. Both can increase reaction rates. More frequent encounters mean more chances to have a reaction. Hitting with more energy provides more energy to break a bond. Physiological work is the process in which an animal takes smaller molecules and converts them to larger molecules or carries out activities that increase order in some way. For example, synthesizing DNA from nucleic acids. Individual nucleic acids have less order than the ordered DNA. Small individual molecules moving at random have less order than, for example, amino acids combined into a protein chain. There are three forms of physiological work, biosynthesis, maintenance, keeping things going, and external work, such as moving or swimming. Third, we consider efficiency of energy transformation, conversion of one form of energy to another. If we think about a process such as joining amino acids to form a protein, then how much of the energy that it took to join each amino acid was lost as heat, low-grade energy, versus wound up captured in that amino acid chain? Or, if muscle contraction is occurring, how much of the energy that was used by ATP to move myosin heads from the cocked to the rigor position and move actin, how much was lost as heat versus how much high-grade energy of movement? So the way we calculate efficiency is by looking at what was the high-grade energy out, so what did we get back in terms of work or a more complex molecule, divided by what it costs us, the high-grade energy in. We always lose some as heat. The efficiency is always less than 1 to 100 percent. The range can be 10, 20 percent to the 90s. For metabolism, is all the reactions that are taking place in an animal. We think of two different forms of chemical reactions, one in which small molecules are converted to larger ones, anabolism, or anabolic reactions building up, and catabolism, in which large molecules are converted to smaller ones, breaking down. Metabolic rate is the rate of energy use per unit time. That's roughly equivalent to the heat energy produced per unit time. For animals that are producing energy mostly aerobically using oxygen, that's also roughly equivalent to the milliliters of oxygen used per unit time. We often consider metabolic rate as mass-specific metabolic rate metabolic rate per gram or kilogram of tissue. That allows us to get a standardized unit per gram of tissue. Animals differ in size, like these two snakes, and those two snakes will have two different total uses of oxygen. But we can adjust for that by looking at just one small piece of tissue and measure milliliters of oxygen use per minute per gram of tissue in first one snake and for comparison in the other snake. And that adjusts for the difference in body size and lets us compare the amount of oxygen use per unit mass. So if we graphed the amount of oxygen used per unit time for a big snake and a small snake, snake A here and snake B, snake A will have a higher use of oxygen than snake B because snake A 
is much bigger. It has much more tissue and therefore more total oxygen use. In contrast, if we look at the milliliters of oxygen use per gram of tissue, that will be much more similar between the two snakes if they're of the same species. Snake A per gram is using about the same as snake B.